going to be covering how to solve some rational equations. A rational equation is when you have a variable that's in the denominator. Okay? And whenever you have a variable that's in the denominator, you have to be able to solve and get rid of that sometimes so that it makes it a little bit easier to work with. So what I'd like you to do, problem number one, being that we need to uh, solve for this letter M, I'd like you to take, here's a strategy you can use, take the whole equation and simply multiply that equation by the letter M. So I want you to distribute the letter M to every single number inside of the equation. When you do that, you will get 15 times M over M minus M squared, M times M is M squared, plus 8M equals 10 M. The reason why we multiply every single number by an M is so that we can have this scenario and these M's right here will simply cancel each other out. And now, we no longer have an M in the denominator right here. Now, in this scenario right here, we are dealing with this concept of a number that's being squared. So automatically, I want you to think you are now dealing with a quadratic equation. Okay? When you're dealing with a quadratic equation, it's going to be in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So now we need to set this whole thing equal to a zero. Now, there's lots of ways to set this equal to zero. My suggestion, yes, Ryan? Minus 10 on both sides. Okay, minus 10, you want to put minus 10m? No, on the plus. Right here? Alright, so here's what we have. We have 15, Ryan. We have minus n squared. 8n minus 10n is a minus 2n, and that is equal to a 0. Now let me order things. Let's get, let's get things in, in order. Negative n squared minus 2n plus 15 equals 0. Now, if you don't like meeting out with a negative m squared, a very easy way to deal with that is to multiply everything or divide everything by a half. A negative. A negative is what I was thinking of. Negative. Alright? Which means if we multiply everything we see by a negative, you'll get m squared plus 2m minus 15 still equals 0. So the negative times the 0 is still 0. Now we have a much simpler quadratic equation. Now that's not the only way you could do this. All right? That's just one way. One second. Now once you have a quadratic equation, all right, one thing you could do is you could use the quadratic formula. We have done plenty of time. So you could use the quadratic formula. If you wanted to use the quadratic formula for this, my A value is 1, my B value is 2, my C value is A, negative 15. You could plug it in, and that would tell you what your roots or your solutions are. Another way is you could use the graphing calculator. So let's say, let's say, Jordan, you're like, you know what, I really don't feel like using the quadratic <laughs> formula. Because you have a graphing calculator, you can hit y equals and type in x squared plus 2x minus 15. And look for what? Look for your zeros. Negative 5 and 3. Okay? Is that what you did? You typed it in? No, I think I'm on the board. Oh, you saw it on the board over here? Alright. Or, you can factor it. This factors to m plus 5, and m 
minus 3. Now, why do you subtract those two numbers? Because a 5 minus a 3 is a 2, and 5 times a negative 3 is a negative 15. Now, I'll do this one more time. Two numbers had to multiply together to equal this last coefficient, which is a negative 15, and two numbers had to add together to equal this middle coefficient, which was a 2. And I found those numbers to be a 5 and a negative 3, a 5 and a negative 3. 5 plus negative 3 is 2. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Now, when I set this quadratic equation equal to a 0, what number has to be plugged in here to make it equal to a 0? Negative 5. And what number has to be plugged in here to make it equal to 0? Positive 3. So my solution set, everybody, is negative 5, comma 3. That's my solution set for question number 1. Now, if you're going to use the graphing calculator, which I'm about to do, all right, I'm going to hit Y equals, and I'm going to type in my equation. Instead of N, you want to use X. I'm going to type in X squared. Plus 2x. Plus 2x minus a 15. And when you hit graph, you should easily be able to see right here. You can see that right here is a root, which is at a negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. That's at a negative 5. And right here is a root at a positive 3. And you can also look at your what? You can look at your table, right? You look at your table, negative 5, 0, and where else? 3, 3, 0. Negative 5, 0, 3, 0. So, let me get that real quick. Alright, here we go, everybody. I want you guys to look at problem number 2, which is slightly more difficult than problem right, what was that? number 1. What was the answer to number one? You know what? I'm not going to tell you. If you want to, you can rewatch this whole video or just fast forward to the part where we like went over the solution. Not once, not two times, but I think three times. That means you tell people why you're so happy. Negative five and three. I'm not going to tell you. Negative five and three. I'm not going to tell you. Okay, it is, guys. All right. So right now, would you guys please put number two? Sorry, I just uh, got. Uh, that's the golf club that I won from a, from a tournament. It was exciting. Don't forget that umbrella. I had to get that golf bag. It was pretty yeah. awesome. What about the umbrella? All right. In problem number two, we actually have to not just worry about this B right here. We also have to worry about this binomial B minus 3 that is in this denominator and this denominator. So let me explain what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to take this whole equation right here, and we have to multiply not everything just by a b, but we have to multiply everything by also the binomial b minus 3. So what I'd like you to do right now is on the outside of this parentheses put b and b minus 3. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to do this as carefully as I can. Oh, at least we're recording now. So we're going to take this, and we're going to distribute this to every single number, okay? So I'm going to do this nice and neat. We have a 4 up here in the numerator. We're going to multiply that 4 times a b, and we're going to also multiply it by a b minus 3, and that's all being divided by b minus 3. So you'll notice that this b minus 3 right here is still in the denominator for now. Plus. Right here we already have a 3 in the numerator. You just times the b that's this. I'm taking all of this and multiplying it to the 4. That's what it looks like after you multiply it to the 4. Now I'm going to take all of this right here, this b times b minus 3, and multiply it to the 3. So you're going to see me right here put a b next to that 3. You're also going to see me put a b minus 3 next to that number 3. And in the denominator, what do I simply have? I have a b still in the denominator. Just to try to make it a little bit clearer, this 4, I put right here. This 3, I put right there. 
Okay? So I'm going to put equals, and in green, I'm going to write a, not a negative B, but a negative 2B. I'm going to highlight it. Next to it, I'm going to write a B. And next to that, I'm going to write B minus 3. And that's all over B minus 3. So I'm going, to, I'm going to scroll back over here. I want you guys to take a look at this real quick. See if you see the pattern here. Okay? So the 4, the 3, and can you highlight this? The negative 2B, they're all right there. And all I've done is taken the B times B minus 3 and multiplied it to every single one of those. Notice, the denominators, have the denominators changed at all? Yeah. No. Now, I want you to understand why we did it. Let me pause it real quick and let you guys get everything written down, and then we'll start up here in a second. The reason we did all this is I want you guys to see that this B minus 3 and this B minus 3 will cancel out. In the second expression, the b's will cancel out. And in the third, the b minus 3's cancel each other out. So let's see what we have left. And the reason we did this was to eliminate all the variables in the denominator. Now all we have left, and the change of color, all we have left in the numerator is 4 times a b. Then we have 3 times b minus 3 in the numerator. And here we have negative 2b times a b right here. Now I've just changed it all to the same color now when we solve it. All right? So we're going to distribute this 3 to both numbers. We're going to distribute, we're going to multiply negative 2b times this b. We're going to get negative 2b squared. We're going to get 3b minus 9 here. And right here we have 4B. Now, at this point, we can take the 4B, we can add it to the 3B, and we get 7B. What type of equation do we have here? We have quadratic because something's being squared. So Liz, what are we going to do with this negative 2B squared? We're going to bring it over. We're going to add it to what? Add it to both sides of the equal sign. So here's our final quadratic equation. 2b squared plus 7b minus 9 equals 0. Alright? Your a value is equal to 2. Your b value is equal to 7. Your c value is equal to a negative 9. If this is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, we need to know how to use the quadratic formula. So we're going to use the quadratic formula right now. Practice writing this formula in your journal. Once again, I'm going to write this down. This is the quadratic formula. We have a minute and a half to do this. All right, whenever you're using the quadratic formula, the very first thing you want to find is this thing called the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac. You, may, you can go ahead and pause me. I've already plugged in the correct numbers. The discriminant in this particular case is 49 plus 72, which gets me to 121. So this number that you're going to plug in here is going to be 121 in this particular case. All right? So now let's plug in our numbers. We have negative b, which our b value is a 7, with plus or minus the square root of, we're going to write in 121 for our discriminant all over 2 times our a value, which will be a 4. So I'll just put a 4 right there. Okay? Once you find your discriminant, fortunately this is a perfect square, so this is going to be negative 7 plus or minus 11, because the square root of 121 is 11 divided by 4. Then you have to break your answer into 2. To split this into 2, Answers, you're going to have negative 7 plus an 11 over 4. And you're going to have negative 7 minus an 11 over 4. This becomes 4 over 4, which is a 1. This becomes negative 18 over 4, which reduces to a negative 9 over 2. So your solution set is negative 9 over 2, comma, 1.
that's your final answer.